The fastball's live up to 97, has touched 98 in the offseason. And you see the heat, 96 to start things off. Rose had the scouting report, offered at it, and it's 0 and 1. Yeah, and you you know, you get lighter coming in with electric stuff, but you got a Louisville lineup that can really bang the ball around too, so should be a good game. And there's that third ball. Wow. It is a big lead curveball from Lighter. You saw his numbers in ERA just under five on the year. 29 innings pitched, a little bit north of that. 19 walks, 44 strikeouts. Batters really aren't hitting him a ton. Just 241 against. He's got to be efficient in his yes. outings. It's the free passes that he's got to really cut down on. And what happens when he gets ahead is he can turn to that secondary stuff, breaking away. Rose goes down, strikeout number one for a lighter. Yeah, and you see right here, we saw the good curveball on 01. Now you see that explosive slider right there, 89 miles an hour. Looks like a fastball last second and just vanishes off the plate. Florida State pitching coach Mike Posey said they worked on some things looking at video this week in between his last start at Clemson. They feel like they found some different areas that they can take advantage of his fastball. Yeah, and I think the big thing that I've noticed, and you see this, swing, swings and misses on breaking balls. I mean, that's outstanding where you get that. I mean, it goes from anywhere the middle down, off the plate, and down off the plate. Well, sometimes 97 is just 97, right? Doesn't matter where you locate it. Hoy softly to first, and it's snagged by Cantu. Two up, two down on six pitches from yeah, Leiter. And that's what you want to see if you're the Seminole coaching staff right there from Leiter. Attacking the zone, going at these guys. Let them put it in play, let your defense work. Defense has been playing good all year. Here's the talented JT Abent, the senior from Crestwood, Kentucky. A veteran, a captain here for the Cardinals. Dan McDonald telling us this morning that when Benson is firing on all cylinders, he has the ability to be the best player on the field. He gets the start and left here and he this evening. And he didn't. He had nothing but praises to say about him. He's down 0-2. Swing and a miss. Now how about that start for Cam Ryder? Nine pitches, a couple of strikeouts. Us here again tonight. Seminole fans have been wondering when they'll have their leadoff man and center fielder ready to rock Gongora. 93 a mile an hour heater. Ross is close. Could see him as soon as this weekend. William Smith Tibbs. Ferrer Cantu Dingus. As the bunt is laid, that's a really good one. Gongora fielding his position. It gets away. Rounding first into second. We'll see how they score it. A massive shift late was put on by Dan McDonald. Couldn't quite get it to you in time on the camera with the starting lineup, but however, Florida State went to small ball, and Williams finds himself on second base. And I think that's all on Williams, too. I think as soon as he saw that third baseman shift and get him to right field, he literally, now that next pitch, hey, yeah, I'm taking advantage of this. I'll get it. I'm a leadoff guy. I'm going to get on base for my big hitters up after me. They're going to give Williams a single. And then he advances to second on the throwing error by Gongora. And now Cam Smith. The bottom of that order, by the way, was Ferro, West, and Lodis. Drew Ferro, a two home run game against the Florida Gators on Tuesday night in Jacksonville. Yeah, he, he hit it all over the ballpark. This kid had three hits himself against the rivals in Gainesville for the Knowles. Cam Smith starting to creep up draft boards. Could find himself as a first round pick. Definitely will be in the top 50. And you just see it's all coming together. Here for the sophomore. Hits this hard, lines it foul. And the count is one and two. Yeah, and you talk about with Cam, you know, everybody talked about the power last year because, you know, swinging and missing a lot. But when he did it, power, he's put it all together. He did it, started off this summer in the Cape. You see those numbers there. 444 batting average with eight home runs. He's had eight different games with at least three hits. Ooh, a little snap back throw. Williams on high alert gets back in there. Ahead of the tag from Dylan Holway. Boy, also a transfer. That's something Louisville's done this season for the first time. They've dipped into the portal. 
Something Dan McDonald did not want to do for the first couple of years of that availability, really since post-COVID. Link Jarrett, oh, he didn't dip his feet into it. He jumped into the deep end of the portal pool, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, and he kind of had to. I mean, you're talking about FSU counting portal guys and new players coming in with 26 players this year. And the one, two. Smith watches it low from Gongora. Marco. Talked about those transfers. Williams transferred from Alabama after one year in the SEC. He has filled Ross's shoes admirably at the top of the order. 2-2 Two -two on the ground. Fielded there cleanly by Keelan. Throw across. One away. Down to third goes Williams. Gongora was a preseason second team All American. He talked about being the Horizon League Pitcher of the Year. They're going to need him to be excellent. Some injuries for Louisville over the last couple of years has made life tough for Dan McDonald. They're hoping a weekend in Tallahassee could be what triggers a run. Here from a program that has been among the best, if not the best, in the ACC over the last decade. Yeah, and you see right there, big hack by Tibbs. But Gungora, 95 on that fastball. And if you look at it, Gungora's real short arm action. That ball sneaks up on you. Not that 95 has to sneak up on you, but when you're short arming it like that, it does. And he doesn't, he's a, kind of a easy arm action. 0-2 for Tibbs, one of the best hitters in the country. The field of play will not hold it up against that side netting. And Tibbs stays alive at 0-2. What can you say about the year that James Tibbs is having? He has been consistent since the day he stepped foot on Florida State's campus. A career 300 hitter. The power numbers continuing to go north. And you just see it, the way he walks, the way he controls the strike zone. And, it, and, it, and you say it great, it's the way he carries himself. He's such a professional in what he's doing already at this age in his life. And, you know, and that says a lot about somebody. But he carries himself well to not just his teammates, not just his opponents, but even the fans. And to see how he interacts with kids after the game. I mean, this guy is the complete package right now. And he's going about doing everything the right way. Three for four against the Florida Gators on Tuesday for Tibbs. One, two, spits on it, two and two. There is that patient eye from Florida State's right fielder. One down in the inning. Runner at third in Williams. Hit a mile high, Keelan. Measuring, makes the grab. That's a big out for Gongora. That really is. It's a really good pitch by Gongora. 95 fastball, elevated it. Almost impossible to get on top of those pitches as a hitter. Florida State will have four lefties here in the order against the Southpaw Gongora, including you flip Ferro, who prefers to bat lefty, to the right side. So that's going to be a unique matchup with all the lefties that the Cardinals will present Florida State here this weekend, starting with Gongor. And it will. Like you said, Ferro, you know, hasn't had an opportunity to really get to swing it a lot from the right side, but he's got a lot of pop on that right side as well. And it looks like we may have catcher's interference right here. You know, Ward Ferrer first base. Yeah, I think we got catcher's interference. right here. Saw Ferrer look back immediately at the ump yeah, and down did. in Napleton. Yep. And so it is indeed catcher's interference. First and third, two outs. It'll be Cantu, red hot, transfer from USF. How about that breaking ball for a strike? And that's what we talked about with Gongora. If he can find that breaking ball right there and have the command with it, 
Cantu a career high five RBIs against Florida on Tuesday. Blasted his second home run in three games. 0-1 pitch, fights it off. But it's now 0-2. The Jacksonville native getting a chance to go back home to Duval County and play in front of family and friends. Went to Creekside High. And had himself a pretty good day. That was numbers. I mean, and they've and that's within the last couple of weeks, too, that they've really climbed. 0-2 check back to first for rare. And they're easily talking to Florida State skipper. Link Jarrett, he said, can't do the way that he's been able to drive the ball, line drive approach. It was cool to see him have a couple of home runs as well. 95 on the gun, one and two. Yeah, during this streak with Cantu, too, the way that average, he's gap to gap, double, double, you know, and if it gets out of the park, that's a bonus, but really just going gap to gap, looking for doubles. See what Gongora offers here on a one, two. Back to the heater. Dan McDonald said it's been up to about 96 at times. It's continued to tick up since his days at Wright State as Cantu takes a deep breath. A couple years ago, he pitched 88 to 92. And now, 92, 93, he can sit at up to 96. And you've seen it today. He's humped it up when he needed to. Good job by Cantu laying off that. It's been a steadying presence. I think Jared said about having Daniel Cantu, a natural first baseman. It's made all the difference in the world for Florida State. Big size, big power. Swing and a miss. How about Gongora? In defensive fielding percentage. Yeah, and that was the one thing that he thought was going to be their weakest link. And I'll tell you what, I think it all started that first weekend. Leiter had the big outing, and, you know, he shows his emotion. I think these guys just jumped on board with what Coach Jarrett was doing, what, the, you know, the starting pitching was doing, what the hitting was doing, and it's just kind of come all together. And, man, they've looked really, really impressive defensively. How about 985? Good work there from our graphics team. I mean, it's just been a while since you've seen a 9-8 for Florida State fielding percentage-wise. And it was a focus. Immediately getting the right personnel that could defend, getting a little bit more athletic. And the Seminoles are also top five in the country in Ks per nine innings. So they're striking a lot of guys out. And when the ball's put in play, they're able to make the routine plays. I and mean, like you said, bringing the right guys in, you got a new guy right there, and Alex Odis at shortstop coming over from UNF. Drew Ferro at second base coming from UCF. Cantu over at first base from USF. Got a stoppage of play. Little confusion on if it was a strike or a ball if Keelan went around. They said he did. I mean, he, so it was one and two. I really don't understand. It was a full swing. We I had mean, it right, I think. Yeah, we did. And that was the same thing. Swing and a miss. Keelan goes down. Third strikeout for Leiter. That secondary stuff early on is really disgusting. And I'll tell you what, that's kind of insult to injury right there because you swing and miss and the ball hits you in the leg and you're out. So you're kind of like, that's not real good, but that shows you how good that slider also can be for Leiter. We talk about the curveball, that slider's just as electric. A couple starts ago for Cam Leiter. He went six strong against Notre Dame. Was able to get Florida State into the seventh inning of that one. And they had hoped he turned a corner. Again, the stuff has been electric since he stepped foot on campus. Family pedigree, I think by now everyone has heard that story many times about his, his uncles. It's just about refining what he's got. And with the way Jamie Arnold has pitched for Florida State on Saturdays, I should say in game twos, because you're going to see him tomorrow on a Friday night. The makings of having an elite staff in the rotation are there. I mean, it's disgusting. That is big league stuff from Leiter, another strikeout. Yeah, and it's good to see him doing different things every weekend. 
because right now he's showcasing the slider tonight more than the curveball, and it has been nasty. Two down in the inning as Isaac Humphrey steps in. The veteran, Livermore, Kentucky. Dan McDonald happy that he's got an older team here this season. Felt like the last couple of years they needed some more leadership. The Cardinals miss postseason mm. ball. That ball strokes. Humphrey to right center field. It is going to leave the park. When you talk about senior leadership, he did what you do. He got behind, I mean, ahead in the count, 2-0, gets a fastball center cut and jumps all over it and hits it over the road in right center field. See the replay right here. Fastball right down the middle. And he absolutely deposited. The fourth home run of the season for Humphrey, his 12th in his Louisville career. You see that exit below 104. That is a good looking swing from the Cardinals right fielder. And again, a Louisville team that went to Winston-Salem last weekend and gave Wake Forest all they could handle. Really had a chance to win all three games. Gave Chase Burns in game two a problem. They led on Burns, and Dan McDonald felt like that one got away from him. And that series now for Louisville, their second series loss, dropped two out of three to Virginia Tech at home the weekend before that. But very similar to and what they went through with Wake, kind of what FSU, I don't want to say very similar, but I think if you'd ask the Seminole coaching staff, they feel like they should have gone two and three in Clemson. And I feel like the McDonald, Coach McDonald thinks the same thing for this Louisville team. Yeah, Florida State team again, that's hoping to respond. That's been the word passed around the Seminole clubhouse. West can't find the ball in 97. And that'll be a walk. Yeah, you just need to refocus right here if you're lighter. You got two quick outs, give up the home run. Now you walk this guy. You don't want this to turn into a big inning. Breaking ball misses. Home plate umpire, Adam Dowdy. That's a good looking pitch right there. McCoy's numbers, the senior. Very similar to what he did to Humphreys. Went breaking ball first pitch, change up second pitch. And he's behind 2 0. Should be careful here with what you throw right here, 2 0. 2-0 high, 3-0 and to McCoy. This Louisville lineup will fight you. One of the best offenses in the country, top 20 in a number of categories. Let's see, if you're lighter here, you're really frustrated, though, in this at bat because you feel like pitch one was a strike, pitch three was a strike, and then this one's off. So in his eyes, you should be 2-2 two -two in the count. Here comes Mike Posey. Quite honestly, the pitch to Logan Beard that was a full count, 3-2. Jackson West dropped the ball. And you kind of think some of that could be family pedigree. But he's a high-energy guy that has embraced the role. How he responds here in the second inning will be key for him. First pitch strike to Lucas Moore, the center fielder. Yeah, doing all... Looks like Louisville kind of pulling something out of the Clemson playbook there. Some fake bunts. Clemson did that a good bit to the Knolls. There we go, there we go. The 
bust, 371 average for Lucas Moore. 97 for Leiter, he is juiced up early back at home. One and two, here to Moore, Louisville threatening. Bounces it in there, good eye from the freshman. Good stop by West right there. Two on, two out, and a 2-2 pitch. Wow, hammer breaking ball. Outside corner on top, thanks to a home run from Humphrey in the top of the second. For Florida State, it's Dingus, a Faroe, and a West. Six, seven, eight in the Seminole order. Dingus, second pitch offering. A mile high, Napleton coming, Win really playing with it. Boy, he ran about 15 yards to go get that one. I'll tell you what, that's Makes a nice, grab. yeah, that's a nice play by Napleton with that wind blowing as hard as it is. You see here, speaking of newcomers, Napleton, one of them. We got a couple of them from Lewis, D2. Gongora, the headliner, and Hoy, who comes from Marist. And McDonald felt it was important to get into the portal as Ferro batting from the right side. Grounder, nice play, tag applied. It was Keelan, off balance throw, McCoy, who made the final out there. The tag in the out, I should say. Two away, good inning so far for Gongora. And a nice play by Keelan right there. That third baseman cut in front of him, able to make it on the run. Good throw, first baseman making the tag. The catcher, Jackson West. And the theme of transfers, the Tallahassee native started his career at Alabama as well. Making his way back to his native Leon County where he started Childs High School. A platoon situation this season with West and Holbrook. And they both offer something a little bit different. West from the left side will grind out at bats, a good eye at the plate, patient, very leadoff approach type of guy. Holbrook, a little bit more power from the right side. 3-0 in there for strike one. Yeah, like you said, West coming in, 500 on base percentage. I mean, the guy just grinds out every A-B. Left field, he's got some carry to it. The park will hold it. Benson, ranging to his right in the second. Top of the order, and Zion Rose, Hoy and Benson. As the 1-1 one, one swung on and missed, one and two. I'll tell you what, sometimes lighter, that slider actually looks like a cutter from time to time, like that one right there didn't have the bite like that one had. And I tell you what, Zion Rose got curveball, a waste of fastball, and then two really good sliders in a row. And you see this one right here. Great tilt, late break, 87 miles an hour. Good looking pitch. That is the sixth strikeout for Cam Leiter already. And a number of them coming from that slider. That time the changeup. He's a true four-pitch mix guy. And while there are others in college who have four pitches, usually pitch number four for most college pitchers isn't, isn't a good one. Correct. Scouts will tell you you're dumping it as soon as you get to the next level. For Leiter, it projects all four pitches are big league. They really are. And, you know, and he's been, like I said, the last few starts, been mixing that changeup in a lot more. And then to the hammer curveball, 12-6. Swing and a miss there from Hoyt. 
You know, and you see the difference in speeds too. The breaking ball, 77. I mean, the curveball, I should say, 77. The slider, 87. Then you get a change up at 87, 88, which moves the opposite direction of a slider. And then you're getting a fastball that's 95 to 98. So you got balls moving all different directions, different eye plane, and much in the speed differential. Changing planes there. High heat up. Hoy had a notion, was able to hold up. And you'll see probably one of the breaking balls right here. You probably either get the curve ball, but you may get the slider. Two-two breaking ball. Chavez called it well. Just missed. He still kind of has an open playbook right here, really, to call something. Give Hoy a lot of credit. 97 barreling in. And he's able to catch a piece. Now, we talked about Louisville's already seen Chase Burns on the year, so you've seen high heat in the upper 90s with wipeout breaking stuff. Another walk works. Third one by Louisville. Solid approach at the dish. And again, these are the things that they're trying to cut back for lighter with the free passes. Cam Wider hasn't had a start this season where he has walked fewer than two batters. He's at three here against Louisville in the third. He walked five at Clemson on Saturday. A weird weekend for Florida State. That one misses to Benson. They travel Thursday, get the news they're not playing Friday due to weather in the Clemson area. Really a nasty weekend all around the southeast. We'll throw back, and Hoy slipped on the way back into the bag, but he's fine. He played two Saturday, then one Sunday. Just a long weekend of baseball, smashed into two games. Two days, I should say, excuse me. Runner going, swing and a miss. Throw down, oh, into center fields. Taking third will be Hoy. It's an aggressive Louisville team. And you can give him a stolen base, then the E2. As a Cardinal now within 90 feet of home. When you're talking about aggressive team, this Louisville team is going to run, and they're going to run, and they're going to run. And you see that ball just sailed on Jackson. Lighter now looking for that punch out. One, two to Benson. Hoy at third after his third stolen base of the year and advancing on the air. Staying alive is the left fielder. And he just kind of slapped at that slider. To Came in with a fastball. Benson laid on it. Continues the at bat though. Fouled in the right field bleachers. Benson at 288 a year ago. And 224 the year before that. Infield is in for Florida State. One, two, hit hard right back up the middle. Base knock. RBI for Benson. It's 2 0 Louisville. Talk about those free passes, they'll kill you. You know, and then we talked about the aggressive of Louisville. You know, we talked about it earlier. 55 stolen bases as a team before that one, so now at 56. And wrecking that havoc on the base pass leads to another run for Louisville. And Benson can really run. Lighter knows it. Pickoff attempts. He leads the team in stolen bases with 15 of them out of 19 attempts so far on the year. 
Runner going. West throw down. Pretty good one and dropped by Lodis. I think Benson might have had the bag stolen anyway. He did. Much better throw by Jackson West there. The Cardinals keep the pressure on. Sophomore Keelan staring at an 0-1 pitch. Now 0-2. As it stands currently, that last run unearned from Leiter. That's contingent on the rest of the inning. See the pitch count starting to climb here on Florida State's number one. He rears back and just fires 97 right past Keelan for his seventh strikeout tonight. And that that was a really good pitch in this play. He went all speed, all speed, both down in the dirt, and then elevates that eye plane. It's pretty tough for anybody to catch up with 97 up there. Final non-conference weekend for Florida State against New Orleans. Leiter went six shutout innings. Three walks, six Ks. So those outings have been in the tank for Leiter, who started his career at UCF. Napleton, a lot of thunder in his bat. It was 90 on the gun. Couldn't tell if it was a changeup or a slider. Slider, like I said, just sometimes he doesn't quite get on top of it, and it looks more like a cutter. Two down. And the 1-1 one, one to the catcher. Right by him, 97. I'll yeah. Tell you what, he has got the fastball. Has as much heat as it's had this season, the way he's sitting. Yeah, consistency, yeah. I mean, consistently. And he pairs it well. Curveball, strikeout, number eight. And so the stuff on display. I guess they decided not to shift on Williams as a bet. Chopper on the ground and foul on the other side of the first base back. They gave Williams a butt single to start things off for Florida State. He advanced to second on a bad throw and error. Nice pitch inside corner. And it's one and two. Great spot right there by Gangora. Williams, two home runs on the year. Catches a piece. Napleton couldn't hang on. It will stay a one and two. Williams hit a towering shot against Clemson up in Doug Kingsmore Stadium that cleared the cafe and was onto the shed of the building beyond right center fields. And that's what he brings to the table, immense power in that left-handed stick. Yeah, and he plays a real good center field, good wheels. And FSU has good options out there with Deion Mez Ross when he comes back. I'm hoping Deion Mez Ross can play in some capacity this weekend. And more importantly, what you can do defensively late in games allows the Knoll some more versatility. Again, hit it where they ain't. Second infield single for Williams. Well, he got two strikes on him. They're like, well, he's not going to bunt, so let's shift. Well, I'll just hit it over that way then. <laughs> If you ask Max Williams, he'll tell you if you don't have video evidence that he hit both balls, 110 exit field. I'll also tell you right now, he's a pretty good chess player because right now he's winning against Louisville and Chess. So the Knowles have a one-out base runner. And 
now Cam Smith. He grounded out in his first plate appearance. Laura check back to first. Williams dives in. Sebastian Giangora, you see Williams get his lead. Six hits, eight runs, five earned, three walks, three strikeouts against Wake Forest last weekend in Winston-Salem. That is a park that plays really small and is built to be offensive. Throw back to first, Napleton. And they are making Williams really work to stay alive there at the bag. He's already gotten his uniform dirty. Now he needs a moment. I'll tell you what, Napleton right now, though, kind of showing a little bit of everything that they got in the transfer portal with him. Leading the team in bat and average, leading the team in home runs, but showing his defensive skills behind the plate as well. Here's the 1-0 to the Seminole third baseman. Misses two and oh. Gongora's dad, Chris, was drafted in the 21st round by the Atlanta Braves back in 1994. Some professional pedigree. As the 2-0 misses 3-0. As he's pitching carefully to Smith. Cam Smith came into the weekend hitting 4-44. The best average is in the ACC. He's already got eight home runs. And he's got a walk. So the Seminoles threatening here in the bottom of the third as they continue to get looks against Gongora. And having good at bats, working the pitch count. If you're Louisville, though, you're looking over here going, wow, that's not the guy I really want up right here. Doesn't matter if it's left on left with Tibbs. James Tibbs the third, the junior from Marietta. Prestigious Pope High. Up in the Atlanta area. First pitch offering. Was that a breaking ball from Gongora? It definitely Took some off of it. Yeah, definitely. Speed-wise, looked like it might have been, but again, it wasn't anything that we've seen from him. Mainly, he's been the curveball, but it could have been a slider. Just backed up on him a little bit. That's exactly what that is. It's a good looking pitch. Gongora using it to perfection to get ahead 0 oh, and 2. Florida State threatened in the bottom of the first. And Gongora really buckled in. Can he do it again? Went to the fastball, outer half, 94. And Tibbs stayed alive. Tibbs had a standout summer with Brewster and the Whitecaps in the Cape Cod League. Hit nearly 300. Six home runs. Won the league's home run derby. It's translated so far here into his junior year. Back to the fastball. Again, Tibbs able to keep himself alive. Yeah, and you talk about Tibbs with his numbers, how every year the power numbers have gone up, the average has gone up. And he just keeps getting better and better, and that's what you're supposed to do when you're here at a school like this. It's every year, just keep getting better. 0-2 bounces in there, give Napleton a lot of credit. Yeah, we talked about Napleton showing off his skills behind the dish. Williams at second, and Cam Smith at first. The dangerous James Tibbs. A 1-2 count from Gongora. Did he go around, check down? No, he did not. Again, another great stop by Nableton. I mean, good job by Tibbs laying off of it. That is third base umpire James Botek. 
Count evens, two balls and two strikes. Throw back to second, Gongora. Just trying to see if Florida State will make a mistake. Make life easier, get a free out if you can. Absolutely. As a pitcher, if you're able to get a pick off every game, it saves, can save and change things up. You've got a battle brewing here between Gongora and Tibbs. Yeah, eighth pitch right here already. James Tibbs came into the weekend 402 batting average. 10 bombs, 17 walks, seven strikeouts. 38 RBIs. My goodness. It's an RBI situation here for the right fielder. Chops it on the ground, could be two. Turn to second for one. Throw back, will get away. Coming home the throw, not in time. Williams just underneath the tag of Napleton. And Florida State's on the board. I think you're going to get a full review right here. Opt not to challenge. I just saw him make the motion. Yep. Hey, if you notice, too, it, it, on that replay, for people who did just see the replay, Max Williams actually was slowing down a little bit. I think he thought that ball had gone in the dugout. Chris, it's a fielder's choice. And an error on Keelan. It's the third error for Louisville. As Tibbs is going to go, throw down a second, not in time. Tibbs swipes second for his fourth stolen bag of the year. Tibbs showing he can run a little bit right there. Hustling down the line to first and now stealing a bag. And to be honest with you, that's a tough air for Keelan, too. i got to be honest with you. And I know you really can't give it to anybody else, but he makes a perfect throw. It's right over the bag. But first baseman and pitcher didn't communicate, and so it ends up on him. That's a tough way to give up the first run of the night for Florida State as Gongora has pitched well. And for the second time, Jaime Ferrer is going to go down to first without making contact with the baseball. That is a hit by pitch. And the Seminoles now have first and second and two outs. Now here's Daniel Cantu. And Coach McDonald going out to have a little talk. in A, B conversation, C, your <laughs> right. way out. Exactly. That's what he said. First pitch to Cantu. Misses on the outside half. Now back in the first, Gongora snapped a incredible slider, breaking down and away from Cantu to strand a couple of nulls. Cantu's been red hot over the last five games. Check down, he did not go. Similar pitch, further off the plate, and it's two and oh. Yeah, very similar to the one he struck out on. Able to lay off on that one. Cantu had 178 career games down in Tampa, USF. Not able to catch that one cleanly, just a piece, and it's two and one. First, when the Seminoles were looking for a first baseman, they knew they needed one, a natural. Can't you fit the bill? Power has played first basically his entire career, experienced, and he stabilized Florida State in the infield. And he really has. You know, and Coach Jarrett kind of talked about it. It's a position that people kind of don't understand just how difficult it is to play. A lot of people are like, oh, well, let's put a tall kid over there. Hey, a tall lefty, he'll be over there playing. Man, it's all about how their footwork is, picking the ball, all that kind of stuff that goes into it. And Cantu plays a solid first base. 
Chopped on the ground, force play at second. And Hoy able to step on the back. A lot of credit, they have fought there in the box and have made life difficult. As Humphrey, first pitch swing in this time. Lodis calls off Smith on the edge of the dirt and right into the grass and left. One away on one pitch. And yeah, really good pitch by Cam. You know, that's the guy who hit the home run on a fastball down the middle. He goes first pitch, change up. Great arm speed, sells it, looks like his fastball. Gets Humphrey out in front, gets him to pop up. Here's Logan Beard. Beard in the seven hole. The senior has been around the program for a while. Waves of that one, cuts and misses one and one. Breaking ball, high in the zone, and it's one and two. Tell you what, to me, that's been his best pitch all year right there. It was like lighter quick pitched. <laughs> Somehow 96 came out of his hands. Beard stayed alive. Logan Beard walked back in the second. Waves of that one, strikeout number nine and the put out. Cantu had to skip it out of the dirt. Yeah, great job by Jackson West blocking that pitch up. Then he goes over there and wants Cantu to do the same thing. Great play all the way around. Good pitch, good block by the catcher. Another good pick by the first baseman. Quick inning, brewing here for Leiter. And he needs one after innings two and three. Accumulated some pitches on his count. Starts McCoy off with a strike. Yeah, he kind of pulled that change up right there a little bit. One, one, pulled down the first baseline, one and two. I'd like to see Leiter elevate. I don't think he's going to, but I'd like to see him elevate the fastball here in her third. Oh, change up. Coy also walked in the second, the Cardinals' first baseman. Here's the 2-2. Swing and a miss. Double-digit strikeout performance for Cam Leiter. Yeah, the first two innings, pitch count was really low. The Knolls were able to work that pitch count up last inning. And then they're trying to find a way to get in that bullpen. Gangora stuff's been really good tonight. He's got just one strikeout for three innings, but he's mixed, he's matched. He's gone east and west, north and south. And he's got Florida State off balance. Again, a lefty arm, some pitch ability, and Florida State lineup that really thrives with a ton of left-handed bats. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, I mean, changing speeds, moving the ball up and down, in and out. I mean, that's how it gets, and there you go right there. He has thrown three off-speed pitches in a row to Dingus. You saw the curveball. Now he's going back-to-back change-ups. I mean, he's kind of got Dingus set up for whatever he wants right here. Elevate the fastball, spot the fastball away or in. Throw another breaking ball. Dingus able to spit on that, and it's one and two. Marco Dingus is a former Maryland commit. Played Juco ball at 
TCC Tallahassee Community College. Which, by the way, might be now called Tallahassee State College, if that gets passed in legislation. I mean, they did it with Pensacola. They've done it with, I mean, all the other ones, so. That's on the table, apparently. Ooh, this one. Dingus almost dove out of the way, essentially. <laughs> I don't know how he, how he got out of the way of that pitch. I don't think he knows either when he was kind of looking like that. Did that miss me? See the fastball type. Ooh. Ooh. Off the end of the bat, right center field gap. It is off the wall. Dingus has extra bases. A leadoff double for the Seminoles DH. A good piece of hitting right here by Dingus. I'll tell you what, Humphrey played that wall like he plays here all the time. Made it close at second. You see this right here. Pitch wide off the plate. Didn't try to pull it, went with it. Drove it off the wall in right center field. You see Humphreys comes up with it clean. Good start right there for the Knowles. A first pitch strike to the second baseman, Thoreau, for Dingus. That was his third double of the season. The 0-1 to Thoreau. Right back up the box, into center field, rounding third, Dingus. Coming home, touching the plate, and we're tied. Florida State's second baseman stays red hot. And it's two to two in the fourth. And I'll tell you what, we talked about Faro getting moved to the right side of the plate because he's been doing everything from the left side. He shows it doesn't matter what side of the plate he's on. Gets a pitch right here, fastball, drives it right back up the box. Great piece of hitting. Tying the game up for the Knowles. 17th ribby for Marco, excuse me, for Drew Ferro. As you saw, Marco Dingus sliding in. And Ferro's starting to show you that athleticism. I talked to a number of scouts over the last couple of weeks. He projects loose swing from both sides of the plate, can play anywhere in the infield, essentially. And they love former quarterbacks, guys who have played multiple sports. And Faro was a star in Tallahassee at Florida High. He won Big Ben Player of the Year. Yeah, and you talked about this. And his speed, too. He's got a good arm. He can, if you had to, you could even move him in the outfield. So he just shows his versatility. Big swing from West. Foul ball. They're going to turn the double play anyway. However, it was an immediate call from Brandon Henson, the first base umpire. It is a foul ball. In a different approach for Florida State here on this Thursday night. They have mashed their way and early in the last couple of weeks to massive leads. They've had to grind against Gongora. That plays right into Jackson West's game. He watches that one. It's one and one. West came into the weekend 368 on the year and on base percentage of 500 <laughs> and this far in the season that's a silly number that really is but that just goes to show you how we talked about every time it seems like he comes up we just talk about him grinding out at bats you see that at three hits on tuesday against florida career high west's brother gage oh pitch clock they're going to call an out. Yeah, called a pitch clock violation on West. But it's I think West. he's coming out there and saying, look, he's looking at the clock out there. I think that's the argument. And so West is out. 
It's been an emphasis in the game this year. The pitch clocks have trickled out different conferences. The ACC has it. Well, but I think that, you know, the biggest thing is you, from, for the most part so far this year, I've seen the pitch clock not be a problem at all. I think the issue was on that one, I don't think the clock got reset because he was not out of the box very long. I think that was what Coach Jarrett's argument was as well. So there's a, an out in the inning. One away for Lodis. That changes everything right there. But really good pitch by Gungora right there. Nice changeup. The 0 1. Knocked down by Napleton. Again, solid job keeping it in front. It prevented Faro from potentially going down to second. Yeah, Napleton looking really good behind the plate. Louisville coming in at 16 and nine. Record-wise, had a 10-game winning streak. Earlier this season, that was snapped by the loss to Virginia Tech. Starting ACC play. Lodis catches a piece. It's one and two. Matter of fact, Louisville started the year 0 and 4. Yeah. And after last year, in which Florida State actually kept Louisville out of the postseason and knocked him out of the ACC tournament, the opportunity to play in the ACC tournament, I should say. As Lodis fouls this one. Louisville needed three wins that weekend and won the first game, and the Knowles took the final two. Part of the transition for Florida State where they finished seven and three in their final 10 games, built some momentum into the offseason. But for Louisville, it was the second time in three years that they had missed postseason. Yeah. Well, and the first time for FSU. And 40 plus years, no kidding. It's been interesting to see as Lodis watches that outside. Dan McDonald admitted COVID. And then the transfer portal era has changed the way a lot of teams have to do business. And I'll be honest with you too, for Dan McDonald, that 2020 team that Louisville had, I don't know if anybody got COVID messed up more than those guys. Because I mean, they had three absolute monsters on the mound. Runner going. Lodis spanks it to left center, coming in. Owen running into each other with the outfielders. The catch is made. Ooh, is that, everybody okay as well? Looks like it. Man, that's scary when you see that happen with two guys, grown men, coming at each other full speed like that. That could have been disastrous right there. It was Benson making the grab. Moore was coming in as well. Looked like Moore had the beat on it. Benson just cut in front. You're lucky. One to make the catch, two, but nobody came out of that with some kind of ligament damage. Yeah, or broke bones. Either way, that's out number two. Gongora making the locals frustrated with all the pickoff moves. Animals starting to lay into him a little bit. Top of the order for Max Williams. <laughs> Williams, a couple singles so far. Tonight, neither has left the infield. But like you said, and that box score, that's two missiles. <laughs> Here's the 0-1. On the ground this time, Beard throws to second. Force out recorded, fielder's choice. Game one of a three-game series. We go Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Here in Tallahassee, with Easter weekends approaching us. 
And it's been a good one so far as we enter the middle innings. Tied at two. And a place where Louisville has struggled historically in Tallahassee. They are just two and seven under Dan McDonald here in Tallahassee since joining the ACC. Florida State actually swept Louisville two seasons ago. And so the Knowles have two straight series victories over the Cardinals. Heading into this weekend here at Hauser. And the heat just too much. Lucas Moore had no shot at it back. Number 11 there for Cam Lyder. I'll tell you what, Lyder showing the emotion right there. He went fastball 94, fastball 95, fastball 96. And you see the emotion right there talking to himself. He's fired up, man. He's fired up. His lips read, you're a pretty good player, but uh, sit down. Yeah, in a clean way. In a cl that was the cleaner <laughs> version. <laughs> the 0 1 Rose, not able to catch the hook. Another strikeout. Two up, two down via the K. I tell you what, Lighter quick pitched him with that breaking ball right there, too. Didn't really give it a leg kick. You see him kind of rush through this. See how he goes fast right there and kind of slide steps from a wind up action. Smoke, toy, 97. Right back where it came from. Tell you what. I'm going to watch out. He matched it with 97 exit velo. That is the third hit for Louisville. Here off lighter. And the first for Hoy, who's now reached base twice. Two down the inning. JT Benson. Had a strikeout in the first, but a big RBI single in the third. That doubled Louisville's lead at the time. He's in a favorable 1-0 count. <coughs> Inside out swing, Leiter got him to roll over. And so Leiter, a pretty easy five. First pitch in the left field, Cam Smith. Waste no time, and he's got a single. Right on cue with O'Canada. Knowles leadoff guy with a base hit. First for Tibbs. <laughs> Tibbs so far still trying to iron out Sebastian Gongora. A pop out and a fielder's choice. He's officially 0 for 2. Quickly ahead, in the count, 2-0, and oh, Gongora. You saw pitch number 80 there. Off speed in there for a strike. And good breaking ball by Gongora. 2-0 count. Only 2-1. Strike two, fastball. Evens the count. And you see Tibbs disgust right there. He thought that pitch was outside.
Tibbs out in front of the 92 mile an hour fastball. Does catch a piece though, it's two and two. And he caught his own body as well. Yeah, it's a good pitch right there by Gangora. A good job by Tibbs to be able to fight it off. Came in with the fastball. James Tibbs, top 10 in the NCAA in RBIs with those 38. Absolutely rips it. Into right field. Florida State going to hold up the stop sign as Smith has to slam the brakes at second. It is a base hit for Tibbs. Smith almost had to dodge the ball himself. And he kind of did. That's why he had to hold up at second because he had to freeze up right there. And Tibbs absolutely smoked this ball. It's a breaking ball up. Turns on it. Cam just having to back up just to get out of the way. Pretty cool note on James Tibbs. He's got 10 home runs this season. That makes it three straight. 10 home run seasons as Ferrer pokes it out to right field. Humphrey was playing it perfectly. Tagging from second to third goes Smith. So one down with the runners on the corners. Ferrer hunting a first pitch fastball. Yeah, got one away, drove it the other way. Good piece of hit and just right at the right fielder. Saw Tibbs there. Those 10 home runs in three straight seasons, the first seminal to do it since Mike McGee. Yeah, and McGee went, what's funny is look at McGee's home run numbers. His actually went, went got less every year. Tibbs have gone up every year. So McGee's last year, I think he had 10. The, his second year, he had 17. Tibbs was 10 his first year, 17 his second year. So Mike, think, go ahead. Sorry. I was saying Mike McGee had some moments in Florida State history, didn't he? He really did. Some Not only as a offs. hitter, pitching too. No kidding. Closing games out. Can to in a 1 0 advantage as the runners on the corner are Smith at third, Tibbs there at first. Florida State has now pounded out six hits against Gongora. Again, finding himself in some traffic. This one pokes away. No throw down as Tibbs swipes second easily. A yeah, good read by Tibbs. Dirt ball read right there. Took off right when he saw it hit. Here's Daniel Cantu and the 2 0 Gongora. Both runners on second and third. Infield comes in. Swing and a miss. Cantu was looking for something firm. And Gongora pulled the string. Yeah, nice breaking ball again by Gongora. Been going to it a lot, 2-0 counts. Well, that dirt ball read by Tibbs keeps that double play out of order and also forces that infield to come in. Inside corner. Just misses. We saw Napleton try to frame it the best he could, but now it's three and one. And Gongora in danger of losing Cantu to load the bases. Now with the base open, you might get another breaking ball right here. Challenged him. Right down the middle, too. I mean, buddy. As a hitter, that's what you're looking for at three one. Couple of veterans, couple of transfers going at it. Full count. Misses into the other batter's box. That is the second walk for Gongora, who's done a nice job limiting him so far this season. But now, nowhere to put Marco Dingus. And as the animals of Section B would say, there are ducks on the pond. Now, I got a feeling we might start hearing some quacking here in the second. There's Smith at third. Tibbs at second. He slammed a double to right center field. They checked down to first this time. Brandon Henson says Din just did not go. 
Tell you what, the animals are already getting on a Corbett here about his hat falling off after every pitch. Base is full of holes. Dingus, right center field. That ball's got carry to it. There it goes. Grand slam, Florida State. A thunder shot from Marco Dingus. Tell you what, Marco Din just got a pitch that you were talking about looking to do damage, and he did exactly that. And he knew as soon as he hit it that that ball was out of the park. And he looked in his dugout and gave his boys the props to give him excitement. And he got this crowd lit up. You see right here, he gets a fat, or a breaking ball actually that hung, and he knew it as soon as he hit it. You see him start walking out of the box. Seventh home run for Marco Dingus. It's six to two, Florida State, O Canada strikes again. It does, I'll tell you what, it's one of the most dangerous things an opposing team can hear. Here's the curtain call for a Marco Dingus. And Drew Ferro, who hit a grand salami against Florida on Tuesday night. Now in a 1-1 count. And you're getting for Rowe here to get back to the left side of the plate after his first two ABs coming from the right side. And so Rowe, more natural from that left-handed stance. A couple of home runs against Florida. Launches it inside. And that stinks for Sebastian Angoro. All four, well, three of the four runs go on his line. Yeah, and he really did pitch a really good game. Thought he mixed speeds up well, located well. Lifted out, foul territory. It'll find the concourse out between the grandstands and the left field bleachers. He called for Roe Adam, his dad, who played at Florida State. I did, and you know, me and his dad actually came in together on a recruit visit. Nice pitch there from Corbett for out number two as Ferro swings through it. Good off-speed pitch down in the zone, or actually out of the zone, I should say. Got Ferro to chase. Talked about Dingus hunting early. I mean, he was in attack mode first two pitches he saw. Yeah, and you saw the first pitch was a breaking ball out of the zone. And he check swings at it. And then the next one's elevated, and the guy hangs it. He absolutely just deposited that pitch into the street. First pitch in there to Jackson West, 94 miles an hour from Corbett. And to go opposite field. Both of his base hits here today have been to right center. Yeah, and when you're a good hitter, obviously, when you can show power the other way, that's a lot. But we haven't even seen nobody has except for us who get to see batting practice and some other games. But when he can go left field and pull it, he hits him over the over the scoreboard. He's got the highest average exit velocities on the team. So you've got the whole stands now going, keep your hat on. Corbin's hat just keeps popping off. Yeah. He, so many guys wear these hats now looser, and you got to worry about that happening. I'll tell you what. I coach a 16 year travel ball team, and I make sure my kids' hats are tight because I can't stand that thing falling off. And those kids constantly bending over and picking it up. Another walk for Jackson West. That is his 11th of the year. West has only struck out five times this season to those 11 walks. Seminole set, uh, excuse me, Seminole shortstop, Alex Lodis. Into the box. And again, the animals are gonna let Caleb Corbett know every time. I mean, they the are, falls off. they are all over it right now. One 0 
skied. Drifting into foul territory, McCoy near the netting, running out of room, but he comes right back in, and he makes the grab. Staff two, and you're facing that offense during the offseason and during practices, that's just gonna make you better as a pitcher because you have to be smarter with your pitches. It's this competition. It's being able to compete. You know, and Coach Jarrett also, ooh. Did I catch the ump? No, that caught, that caught Jackson West ah. right in the wrong spot, but he's letting that umpire know, hey, I'm good. Because he, hey, this is what a good catcher does. He knows right now, I got my pitcher in a rhythm. I don't want to break it. Let's go. There's Gavin Keelan in an 0-1 count. One and one. Good piece of hitting for Keelan. Could have extra bases as he rounds first. Short porch and right will make it close at second, however. Keelan, the shortstop, has a double. That's a good response from the Louisville bats here in the sixth. Yeah, Cam missed the spot right here. Fastball in. And Keelan did what you're supposed to do with it. Turned on it and drove it into right field for a double. That equalizer for lighter, though. That breaking ball. They're going to call a Bach on lighter. Kind of need to see this again. I didn't, I didn't see it. it. Came to a stop. Unless he rolled his shoulder. He stopped. Through the right side, base hit for Napleton. RBI for the catcher. And Louisville responds right back here on the top of the sixth. And I just didn't see anything on the ball, but nobody argued it, so obviously he must have. But you're right, great response by Louisville. Two back-to-back -back base hits and a ball mixed in there. Now to Isaac Humphrey. The baton is passed. Louisville trying to chip away at this thing. Humphrey, who left the building back in the second inning with a solo home run. That was foul on the other side of the bag. There's that home run again, the no doubter. Fastball middle in. He knew it as soon as he got it. it the fourth home run of the season for Humphrey, who is now down at first base. Yeah, what? Uh, what just happened? We get catcher's interference, maybe? Yep, exactly what it is. Home plate umpire immediately comes and points. On the ground could be two first pitch. To second for one, the turn. And that's huge for Florida State. Two outs on one swing, six, four, three. And that Lodis to Faro connection has been absolute gold for Florida State this season. And pitcher's best friend right here. It's a breaking ball, right to Lodis. Good feed, good turn by Faro. Easy 6 4 3 double play. About 40 feet 
with a stiff wind that barely hugged the inside of the left field foul pole over in Jackson. Well, and I'll tell you what, nice pitch right there, great slider. You know, with Armstrong too, you know, you talk about being roughed up a little bit, but typically he's a he's a relief pitcher, and it's different man, mindset when you go in and start. So, you know, I kind of look at those numbers a little skewed. I think the biggest thing you've got to look at for him is, like you said, the 19 strikeouts to only three walks. And again, another great breaking ball. And clearly, Chris Link Jarrett wants to hold this at a 6-3 game and keep Napleton stranded at third. Off to a good start, the 0-2. Waste pitch is West able to keep it in front of him. Great job by West. Last thing you want to do is give it a pass ball or a wild pitch. Good job blocking that up. McCoy, and one two count. Just misses the outside corner. Armstrong wanted the call. I think everybody in the stands up wearing Garnet Gold did too. Armstrong led Florida State last season with 32 appearances out of the pen. Actually started against Louisville in the final series of the game up there. Strike three calls. Armstrong does his job. He strands the runner 90 feet from home. Back on the board. Louisville actually put up two on if you're just joining us after getting the third run of the game. As Williams swings and misses, but a 6-4-3 double play kind of torpedoed the inning. Yeah, it really did. Kind of deflated him a little bit. One, one, high heat. And it's one and two as Williams waves through. Top of the order here for the Knowles. Same spot, Williams not able to get the barrel there. Tell you what, Caleb Corbett right there put on his play. He went breaking ball down and then elevated and stayed right at that chest high with that 94 mile an hour fastball. Williams just not able to catch up with it. Seminole third baseman steps into the box. Watches a fastball down one and out. Smith has reached base. His last two plate appearances, a walk in the third and a single in the fifth. That finds the zone. One and one. Corbett's 1-1. One, one. Fouled out of play, 1-2. and two. Smith offered at the 1-2. And two strikeouts now in the inning for Corbett. Two away in the Seminole sixth. Good start to this inning from Corbett. Seemed a little bit more relaxed. Fastball's down in the zone, elevates it when he needs to. Good breaking ball. Tibbs takes a first pitch strike. He singled back in the fifth. of a four-run Seminole fifth inning. That has been the difference so far. And he's down 0-2. I'll tell you what, though. Corbett's hat falling off every pitch. It keeps him limber, and he's constantly stretching to bend over and pick it up. O2 pitch misses low. One and two. There's a big shift now on. As 
Hoy going to go into right center field. Big breaking ball. So I'm guessing he's got the report that I had on him, two of them. So you see the shift, third baseman all the way in right, shallow right, right field. Strike three a calls. That is a dominant inning for Caleb Corbett. And a pinch hitter to start things off. Lucas Moore out of the game. This is Eddie King Jr., number 42. King Jr. played in 50 games a year ago. 46 starts for the Cardinals. Swing and a miss against the offerings of Armstrong. Predominantly in the outfield where he made 38 starts. King hitting 320 on the year. Dan McDonald telling us we still haven't settled on a lineup. We've got 14 guys we can use and figure out the matchups. The Cardinals haven't had the same lineup in any of their last 25 games. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, I mean, I know we talked to Coach McDonald. We were looking at it, trying to figure out, because, I mean, you're like, well, who's the main guy? Who's their guy? Tough play there for Ferro. King can fly down the bases. Should be a hit. That ball was smoked. It's a tough play. Second straight inning, the Cardinals have a leadoff man aboard. Still no official ruling. First pitch to Zion Rose is a ball. They are going to give it a single. Zion Rose was red hot coming into the weekend, into this Thursday night. It's King Jr., who just got back in there. But Rose coming in his last six games, 391. Nine hits and 23 plate appearances. Just a home run away from the cycle in midweek action against Cincinnati. It's been a consistent force all year for Dan McDonald. They're leading off. Yeah, and he's, like you said, one of those people that moving parts, now that he's gotten in more consistently, he's been producing on a regular basis. Again, the check back to first. Eddie King, five of six on stolen base attempts. He's got a big lead, too. Breaking ball down on the dirt. And it's two balls and a strike. It's been tough sledding so far for Rose. Three strikeouts. All those coming against the offerings of Cam Leiter. Now three and one. As Rose has been able to lay off the off speed. Now a walk. Louisville's got two on. Nobody down here in the seventh. Trying to mount a comeback here against the Seminoles. Whose bullpen has given up a couple of comebacks in recent memory. I'll tell you what, Armstrong just didn't look right, that whole batter. For the two-hole hitter. Squares around a bunt. It's a really good one. Armstrong's got no play. It was perfectly placed. And the Cardinals are in business here in the seventh. Base is loaded, nobody out. That's a tough one, though, but as hard as that's bunted, Cam Smith's got to come get that ball. 
him breaking back on one bunt that hard, the pitcher can't make that play. And Chris was right. That is going to be Armstrong's last batter. And the Knolls are going. Benson, first pitch offering. It will not stay in play. JT Benson, the left fielder. RBI single back in the third. Boy, Louisville would love something similar here. There's that breaking ball. It is a tough pitch. It's 0-2. Yeah. First two pitches have been breaking balls. O2 in Benson fouled it off, but I'm telling you, that was loud off the bat. Well, it's not where you want your O2 breaking ball. I promise you that. Joe Charles is sitting there kicking himself, going, oh, I probably don't need to do that. And Benson, 333 batting average with the bases loaded this year. Swing and a miss. That is a big strikeout in a huge spot for Joe Charles. And that's where you want your O2 breaking ball to be. You see right here, looks like it's in the bottom of the zone and it just disappears. Great pitch by Joe Charles and good job by Jackson West blocking that up. Base is still loaded, one down, Gavin Keelan. First pitch, 95. Up and in. There's that. Mid fast, mid 90s fastball you're talking about. Keelan doubled back in the sixth. A really, really good breaking ball. 85 mile an hour slider. Tight, tight break. Another one. One two pitch. See if he relies on Jackson West again right here to block this up. Go slider down on top of the plate. Or if maybe elevates the fastball. Swing and a miss, back foot. And the slider working for Joe Charles. He's got a pair of K's since coming on. You see this one like you just said, perfect. Back foot right there. That is about as good as it gets, and the emotion he's showing needs to realize those. We're talking about only two outs. You still got to get that third out, but what a momentum swing this would be, especially this late in the game, if he can come in and get another out right now. And now it is the bat of Luke Napleton. First pitch strike, 94 on the gun. But Napleton with the bases loaded is the Cardinals' top power threat. Seven home runs this season. He hit 29 last season. Slow roller. Florida State's gonna get out of it. Joe Charles hyping his team up, coming on in relief. Klein and Napleton, who all had opportunities with the bags full of cards. Well, that's just deflating if you're Dan McDonald's group. They've still got six outs to play with. And give Caleb Corbett some credit as Ferrer due up for Florida State. After the Grand Slam, he's done a really nice job of keeping the Cardinals in the game. He's done a really good job. Breaking ball's been good. Fastball, he's been able to elevate when he needed to. Keep it down on the knees when he's had to. There's that elevated fastball right there. But I'll tell you what, and it is heartbreaking, I know, for Louisville right there in that kind of situation. But I'll tell you what it does do for the Knowles coaching staff is give that confidence in somebody coming out of the pen in a big situation and getting it done. We talk about a seminal bullpen that's looking for answers. Tuesday against Florida, a step in the right direction. They went seven innings of shutout baseball out of the pen. However, you can't just erase the memories at Clemson. You need guys to step up if you're going to get to where you want to go this season, right? If you want to host a regional, if you want to make it past that, you need guys to step up. Can Joe Charles be an answer for Florida State? Signs so far, say if he stays healthy, he's got a lot to work with. Well, I'll tell you what, he did it against Florida on Tuesday and turned right around and did it tonight. Full count. 
and he's ball four. Jaime Ferrer, leadoff walk here in the Seminole seven. runner at first base. Gamez. Jordan Williams. We're going to get a good look at the intercom. That's they not Jordan, Jordan Williams. Williams. That's Diamez Ross. That is Diamez that is Ross. Not Jordan Williams. They got it wrong in the Seminole press box. Because typically, you can actually probably hear it into our microphones over the act. Right. right. Clearly said Jordan Williams. Well, and I'll tell you what, they did it because that's what FSU's been doing this year. When Ferrer gets on base late, Williams has been coming in for him and going. So I guess they just assumed. I definitely think something's fixing to happen right here with Diamez with the pickoffs, the pitch out. Dan McDonald will come out of the Louisville dugout. That could be it for Corbett. A really good sign for Florida State to get Diamez Ross back involved. It is. Here this evening. Corbett will give way to a Cardinal reliever. Seminole starting center fielder and leadoff man, Diamez Ross, who has been out of action for the last eight games with a hamstring injury back in there for Florida State. New pitcher now, Ty Stark. Got some pretty good numbers so far this year. 0.87 ERA. Did you see that? Six foot six, 170 pounds. Tall and lanky. You got a lot of elbows and arms coming at you. There's a swing and a miss from Cantu, two and two. Good slider. You see those numbers right there, 0.87 ERA. Second strikeout here of the night. Yeah, really good pitch by Stark. Just kind of froze Cantu up. I think he was looking off speed. Stark just paints it on the outer third. Kind of look at his build and everything. Kind of because like Chris Sale coming in that three-quarter arm slot. Now here's Marco Dingus.
Gingis' grand slam back in the sixth has made all the difference in this ball game for Florida State. Shoots it out to right field again. That's Gary, and it's high off the screen. Ross can fly. They're going to wave him home. And he's going to be in the RBI double for Marco Dingus. And Ross's speed, once again, the difference. Great piece of hitting right here by Dingus. But I'll tell you what, you're right. Diamez Ross off the bat knew it and never stopped. Coach McGay, he didn't even think about holding him up. You see right here, actually a really good pitch by Stark. Then just goes down and gets it and just drives it off and just misses a home run by inches. And now Drew Ferro. Five RBI night for Marco Dingus and watch Diamez Ross from right the bases. There. Yeah, I'll tell you what, as soon as he saw it, he got that secondary lead and he knew right then, I'm not stopping. The aggressive base run of my FSU pays off for them. You can just see the jolt of energy that he is to the rest of his club. And they've missed that at the leadoff spot. And Max Williams has filled in admirably for Ross as the 1-0 is a strike to Ferro. But you don't replace a true leadoff hitter in the mold of a Diamez Ross. I mean, he is a true table setter. And he is. And like you said, Williams has done a great job. And, and that's the tough thing about it. You know, Louisville has the same situation over there is they have so many bats that could be in the lineup. FSU does as well. Um, but you're right, Diamez, man. I mean, just what he does, why we've always called him the spark plug just because he does that at the top line, whether it's a walk, hit by a pitch, base hit, you know, whatever it is, he just finds ways to get on base, finds ways to score. High chopper. McCoy will step on the back. Bro wasn't sure where that one was, kind of got in on his hands and he wasn't sure if it was foul or fair. Advancing the third was Dingus. So two down, Jackson West. Eight hole hitter for Florida State against High Stark. West was looking for the safety squeeze. They said he did go around. West disagreed. Third base umpire. Said the Knowles catcher did offer 0 and 1. Chopper coming in on it, going to be a tough play. And not made by Keelan. Run scores for Florida State. It is a RBI single, an infield hit, and the Knowles lead is five. And things will drive you insane as a pitcher, but I'll tell you what, Jackson West finding ways as always to get it done. Pounds this thing right in front of the plate. Gets over Stark, who he fell down. And I'll tell you what, Keelan almost made a heck of a play on this. And Alex Lodis to that right center field gap, ranging over Humphrey. He'll retire. First pitch to Humphrey. Here's the ball, excuse me, one and one now. Six, seven, eight, due up. Yeah. 
Now two and one. Yeah, pretty good looking pitch right there. Might have been a little in. 2-1 on the ground to Lodis. He makes the play. And beats Humphrey by a step for the first out of the inning. Hey, well, Humphrey got down the line pretty quick there. Here's Alex Ali Sale. Came into the game at second base a couple innings ago. Switch hitting freshman from Milwaukee. Good average on the year, 327. Yeah, Coach McDonald had a lot of really good things to say about him. Really likes the way he plays the game. Good up the middle, can play short or second. One, two, strikeout looking. Joe Charles, a slider, has been on another planet here tonight. Tell you what, come in and done exactly what the coaching staff for FSU was hoping he'd get from him, and probably then some. Ryan McCoy steps in and takes a strike. Another strike going to. Hey, Ryan, hey, Ryan. Two sliders in a row. See if he wastes one up right here with a fastball. Goes with a slider down or back foot. He did go to the back foot, just short opted. West blocking it up with his forearm. Not feeling too good. Boy struck out twice here tonight. Make it the hat trick. Joe Charles, fourth K of the evening. It was so important the way that 11 treated him throughout his career to be there on this day, to remember one of the great human beings, not just in baseball, but in human history. And nobody had a bad thing they could ever say about Mike Martin Sr., a guy who changed so many lives and changed the game of college baseball forever. Absolutely, and just the, like you said, it wasn't just the players that he touched or opposing players or coaches or and it was fans. It was just like you said, people in general. And, you know, Coach McDonald, it was kind of neat because, you know, when all this went down, it was everyone about to start their season. And like you said, he just told us, he said, man, I just, I felt like I needed to be there. Like, I, he goes, I don't know what it was, but something just told me I need to be there. And McDonald and... 11 had a, a tremendous relationship. And McDonald talking about how when Louisville made the transition from the Big East to the ACC, that 11 was incredibly open and welcoming to the Cardinals. He joked, he said, I got in the first Zoom for the coaches. And I got Jim Morris, 11, Danny Hall, Mike Fox, all on the same Zoom as that one, chin music. And he said, I turned around on my staff and I said, holy, you know what? <laughs> this is the real thing now here in the ACC. Yeah, and at that time there was. We had a whole bunch of legends. Jack Leggett right at then. Clemson. Jack Leggett at Clemson as well. That's All right. On the same Zoom. Swing and a miss as Williams goes down. Yeah, good pitch by the new pitcher right there, Caden Campbell. Really good slider. Eleventh appearance for Campbell. Seven seven one ERA. Those seven strikeouts make it eight strikeouts and seven and a third. Indicates he's got pretty good stuff. Yeah, it looks like he's one of those just the walks and maybe got to him a little bit this year. 
As a reliever, it doesn't take much for that ERA to be inflated. One zero to Cam Smith finds the zone. One and one. Cam's reached base twice here in game one of the series. A walk in the third and a single in the fifth. Just misses the zone. Now two and one. And not a bad pitch. And you talked about it earlier in the game with Cam Smith about his pick pitch recognition and what he's done this year. I mean, you see him right there. That's a tough pitch to lay off of. 2-1 pitch. Fouled it off the inside of his foot. Stayed in the field of play. But Smith immediately comes up hobbling. Looks to be all right. Yeah, I think it got his shin guard that he's got there. And the 2 2. Oh, just misses that inside corner. Again, another good pitch by Campbell just off the plate. Full count offering from Campbell to Smith. Ooh. Off the glove of the southpaw. Coming in, making the throw, not in time. It'll be a single for Smith. Ahoy did his best. It looks like Campbell's okay. They're gonna check on him just in case. Yeah, I think it just got kind of the palm of his glove. But you're right, Hoy almost made a heck of a play right there. That is athletic trainer Josh Gruber. I'm gonna talk to Campbell. I'll tell you what, as a star, I mean, as a pitcher, one thing that you hate is that comebacker coming at you. And especially if you're a guy who doesn't finish in that good fielding position, puts you in awkward position sometimes. So anything that, you know, really kind of mess you up. Tibbs, first pitch, slow roller. Fielding his position as Campbell just beat the Knowles right fielder to the back. Yeah, good play all the way around defensively right there. Tibbs hustling down the line. And now here's Diamas Ross getting his first swings. And you hear the crowd. And you hear the crowd giving him a standing O. Sitting in the four hole in place of Jaime Ferrer, in which, and in whom I should say, he pinch ran. A sophomore from Melbourne, 298 average. Finished his freshman year hitting 287. A couple of doubles, triple two home runs, scored 26 runs. A season marred by injury as he chops it on the ground. Keelan's got it and makes the throw across. This ball there, the velocity. You see that line for tonight. Two innings, no hits, no walks, four punches. And the big moment of this game is so oh, King. Left field's got some carry. Will the park hold it coming back now? And making the grab is Max Williams. That ball got lost in the night sky. And Williams went back to the track before drifting inward, allowed out. But the big moment of the night for Joe Charles, seventh inning, bases loaded. Full of cards, nobody out. Two strikeouts and a ground out. Yeah, and he showed the emotion coming off, too. 94 right there with that fastball. 
There's Zion Rose. On the ground, how about Smith? Onto his feet, he's got a gun. Did he keep his foot on the bag? He did. That's a web gem for the Knowles at the hot corner. It's a big league play right there from a big league, future big leaguer. I don't know if they're, I'm not sure if they're reviewing it or not. Hold the call. Point, Chris Chavez. <laughs> well, just like I said, I just don't think with it being called out, if he'd been called safe, I don't think they could have overturned it. So two down on the inning. And now it's going to come down to Dylan Hoy. Second baseman's got a pair of singles here this evening. First pitch, Charles, he has got his slider going in a way that the Cardinals haven't been able to figure out here tonight. Career high, four strikeouts in a seminal uniform for Charles. A career high now in innings pitched. And I tell you what, if he can come in and shut the door, this saves the Knowles bullpen for the next two days. Yep, and especially if you can get Arnold to come in and do what he's been doing and get you seven innings tomorrow. At least Sunday or Saturday, I'm sorry, up for grabs. Right back to the off speed. Snaps a good one in there. And then get a slider, like you said, it's just been on point, but this is exactly what Coach Jarrett talked about that he needed from a righty out of the pen. As someone whose breaking ball can be what it is and throw it consistently for strikes. K time the champ. Oh, Hoy caught a piece. West cannot hold on. And the Seminole faithful. We'll have to wait one more pitch. Louisville led 2 0 after three. Florida State ties it up in the fourth. A grand slam there in the sixth. Check down the third. He did not go. And the count evens at two balls and two strikes. It was the salami from Dingus in the fifth that made it 6 to 2. Louisville got one back. Charles, though, shut the door. On base is loaded and nobody out. To the heater, 94 on the gun. And Hoy doing his best to stay alive and doing a pretty good job of it. Solid hitter with two outs on the season. You see the number popping out of your bug. Here's the 2-2. Try to go to that back foot. Hoy able to spit on it, full count. JT Benson, the left fielder is on deck. Thursday night, ACC baseball. As Charles, slow roller. Lodis, game one to the nose. Florida State eight, Louisville three. And the Seminoles got a dominant.